Hello everyone, it's time for another episode of Loudness War with your host Wormonger. Got great news to share, I did some acoustic treatment to my studio, so now the recording quality is so much better. And we are good to go! Today's hot topic is dynamic range compression. It's that little thing that confuses all the people and everyone keeps asking about it. Nonetheless, I would like to share as many as 10 tips for dynamic range compression. So, without further ado, let's get started. First of all, do not use a compressor. Did I get your attention? There are many other techniques to achieve similar effect and they often yield better results. Check this out. Okay, so what is dynamic range compression? There are two things here. There is an average signal level, which relates to volume, and people often would like to drive as high as possible. And then there is peak level, our maximal signal level, which cannot exceed 0 dB, which is max capacity of our sound system. We would like to drive our signal higher, so that the volume increases, but our peak level cannot exceed 0 dB, all the signal will distort. One way around that is to even out the volume through the track so that the peak level and average level are all the same. That's a very simple description of our goal today. So, a quick reminder, what is a compressor and what are the problems with it? I've got some simple percussion loop running here and set up an Ableton compressor. It has these very nice visuals, so you can see what's going on. So basically, compressor is a volume automation device. If I enable it, then it triggers at some threshold point. If incoming signal exceeds this threshold, the signal is attenuated by some ratio. And then when signal falls back below threshold again, then the gain reduction is released after release time, resulting in this volume automation curve in yellow. But the problem is that all these controls are very indirect and do not necessarily correspond to what people hear or what people would like to hear. Now, there are of course many types of compressors, analog compressor emulation and so on, and unfortunately, each of them implements these controls and this curve differently. So basically, you would have to learn a new device every time and tune it all by error. I think that there must be some better way to tell exactly that I would like to cut, for example, this blue peak at exactly this level. So how can we do that? Number one is a manual volume control. You can always do that in every scenario and in every dough. And it gives you the finest control over details of sounds. In such case, you use your own ears and your own taste to polish the sound and no device can do that for you. Surprisingly, this is actually what many sound engineers do. And detailed audio edition is a must for every high budget project such as a movie or video game. Unfortunately, it also takes the longest time. Personally, I use that approach only for one-shots or special effects which are difficult to grasp by any device. For instance, this is a riser effect, a serum preset, and I set up this light blue automation curve for volume to even levels out. Let's hear it quickly. Watch the level. But if you don't have all the time in the universe to set up things manually, there are most streamlined tools to do the job. Number two are volume LFO tools, such as Volume Shaper from Cable Guys. In this example, I set up some Euclidean rhythm on a bass. Let's hear it. 
and watch it on oscilloscope. There is this very sharp peak in blue and the envelope is overall not very even. Now let's enable the shaper box. So I manually cut the attack here by many dB and also shape the middle part of the sound. So as now you can see, the note volume is pretty even over the duration of the sound. This approach is very effective on any simple looping sound, such as bass or drum. But the extra advantage of volume shaper is that can be triggered by MIDI, so you can also handle all types of scattered sounds, polyrhythms, swings, let me demonstrate that with some kick. Now I set up a side chain which fits MIDI into volume shaper and if I now apply a groove to the bass line it will be still in time. No groove on a grid with groove. So yes, it can work for these kinds of sounds. Number three is Transient Shaper. I'm using Neutron 3 from Isotope package. And what this device does is that it detects transients and allows us to change their volume. In our case, to reduce the volume of transients, so overall sounds become smoother and the envelope evens out. Now, transient shapers have two advantages over compressors. First of all, they detect transients directly, and transients, to make things clear, are the portions of the sound which, by our error, are perceived as the start of a sound. So, this is exactly what we want. Unlike in compressors, compressors have this attack and threshold settings which are made up and artificial, while transient shapers target transients directly. The second advantage is that transient shaper is not affected by overall volume level. If we've got audio file and we decide to, let's say, boost one part by 2 dB, and the other part reduced by 2 dB, the transient shaper will pick that transparently, while the compressor will actually work against our intent. The compressor will compress the louder part more, making it quieter, but it will also compress the quieter part less, making it louder, which is exactly opposite of what we are trying to do. Okay, so I've got this bus line here exactly the same bass line every time as I'm too lazy to make a new one for an episode. Anyway, you can hear and also see clearly on oscilloscope this clicky attack. Now let's enable Transient Shaper, which for every band reduces the attack but boosts the sustain part of the sound, so the overall volume remains the same but the sound envelope is even. Now hear that. It's quite subtle. It makes more sense when I play it together with some lead sound, or at least this clean arp from Dune. Let's bypass and play. Now listen to the attack part of the bass. Can you hear that? When I enable Transient Shaper, the attack part of the bass got hidden. So now our ARP is the main instrument while the bass line doesn't interfere with it. This makes the ARP stand out while the bass line stays in the background. 
Number four is Dynamic EQ, a device that is kind of similar to multiband compression, but also quite different. And the main advantage of Dynamic EQ is that it allows us to precisely target frequency ranges or even single partials, just as an example I'm going to demonstrate right now. Now, this is actual bus line from my latest project. It does have a phaser running, so the level changes over time. But additionally, after I boosted the audio, I discovered it has this nasty resonance at C sharp, a third harmonic of F sharp at exactly 138 Hz. And I wanted to fix that resonance. So I set up a dynamic EQ here. And it targets that C sharp when it comes in. And otherwise, it doesn't. And the lower end is also compressed with this EQ. So now observe this blue bar. It changes its level over loop over 4, 4.5 dB. especially becoming loud at C sharp. Now if I enable dynamic EQ this effect is much less pronounced and the resonance doesn't blow the speakers in my room. Okay this video is getting long so I cut it at four techniques but I promise there will be 10 techniques as long as there are 10 fingers in my hands. Okay, so you are good to go. Hit like and subscribe to not miss the next episode.